Welcome to Corporal's Corner. Today we're going to talk about stealth camping in low profile shelters. So stick around. Over the past several years I've been asked about stealth camping and what I think about that. And truth be told, I've kind of steered clear of that topic because I try to keep my channel legit in the fact that we're showing outdoor skills, bushcraft skills, survival skills, things like that. I don't want to show anything that would cause somebody to get hurt or possibly get in trouble. But I keep being asked about it. So here's my take on it. I'll give my point of view on two topics, location and shelters. Let's kick it off with location. Everything we do in stealth camping is about location, location, location. I don't want to be in an open field somewhere. I don't want to be off a main road. I don't want to be off a main trail. And to be honest, I want something that's so concealed, like this right back here, that the common person will walk right by and not even know it's there. Okay, for the most part, this location is good to go. We're elevated, there's nice level spots everywhere. Put a small tent right there. I wouldn't go that route. However, we have two trees, one here and one here, which makes it ideal for any type of shelter configuration that you wish. Another good thing, all that foliage and growth over there ran anywhere from neck to head height on me. However, there's small openings that can peer through. And from this spot right here, I can see out about two or three football fields, which would allow you to put up any type of early warning signals should you choose to go that route. The last thing I want to talk about is an exit point or means of egress. We came in over here. You never want to exit the same way you came in. In case you see somebody, you want to be able to drop that shelter, stuff it, and be down that trail. So there's our entrance. And over here is our exit or our means of egress. You see that small animal trail that wraps around and goes down into that ravine. Let's go ahead and move on to our shelter. We want to think about being concealed at all times. You don't want any bright blues, oranges, or yellow. Okay. The whole point is to not be found. So today I'm going to go with my Woodland Camo Military Poncho. It's a multi-use item. I can wear it, make a shelter, make a sleep system, and even a bed. Let's go ahead and move on to our ridge line. You want anywhere from 25 to 50 foot of paracord. Same rules apply. You want dark colors, dark green, dark brown, even grays. You want it pre-made so that you can deploy it quickly. So here's one of my pre-made ridge line systems that I run with. I got 50 foot of dark green paracord that's hanked up so I can deploy it easily. I got a bowline on this end right here. I have two loops that are tied together using a fisherman's knot and attached to the ridge line with prussic knots. Now the last thing I want to talk about before we get started on shelters are tent stakes. Plastic or metal stakes, anything pre-made, good to go. Same rules apply, no bright colors. The one drawback to these are what if you saw somebody coming and you have to collect up all your stuff real quick and DD down that trail. Do you want to fight pulling stakes out of the ground? Another choice might be to simply make some tent stakes. This way if you got to bug out real quick, you can abandon these in place.
Let's go ahead and talk about our ridge line. Normally I would suggest hanging your ridge line anywhere from waist to chest height. However, you're stealth camping. So once you get in a mindset of low profile shelters, and for me, low profile means anywhere from your knees to your waist, no higher than your waist. Now, all I did on this end over here, to tie a trucker's hitch, and on that end over there, we tied a bowline with an improvised marlin spike hitch with a toggle through it. This provides quick releases on both ends. All I do is pull this cord, this end will drop, pull that toggle out, that end will drop. Then I can stuff my gear and go. Here's my bowline. All I'm going to do, place it through, and it creates that pocket. Take my wooden stick for a toggle and tighten it down. And here's your quick release. Now that we have our ridge line all set up, let's go ahead and talk about our shelter configurations. This type of setup right here will accommodate three basic types of shelter configurations. So lean-to, A-frame, and plow point. And every single one of those setups consists of some variation of feeding this prusik knot or prusik loop through one of the corners or both corners of your grommets on your tarp, stretching that tarp tight, and then staking it down. So let's go ahead and kick this off with our lean-to configuration. Now from here, we can move on to our A-frame. All we're doing is locating our grommets on the center of each side. And just like last time, we'll pass our Prusik loop through that grommet, insert our toggle, and then we can pull it tight. The last shelter I want to talk about, which is my personal favorite, is a plow point shelter. All we're going to do is grab one corner of our tarp or our poncho, run our Prusik loop with a toggle through that grommet. If you're dealing with an actual military grade poncho, you have a drawstring on the hood. What you're going to want to do is take that drawstring and run it through your existing Prusik loop with a toggle. What this does is it allows you to pull the center of that poncho up into that plow point configuration. Now all I gotta do is stake it down. And if you don't have a drawstring on your hood, all you gotta do is grab a rock or something, place it inside that hood, and then tie it off with a jam knot. Attach it to your Prusik loop, and then pull it tight. And 
And the beauty of these low profile shelters behind that growth or foliage is that they can't be seen and you're 100% concealed from the outside. Welcome back. This is good to go. Now I want to talk about one last thing. You have an entrance and you have an exit. It only take a matter of minutes, walk out in these woods, cut a few saplings down, carve a point on the bottom, and stab them in at some random pattern at your entrance. This way if anybody does walk by, it won't pique their curiosity. Now, there's several moving parts to stealth camping. We only cover two of them, location and shelters. And truth be told, I steered clear of this topic for years. And the reason why is because it sends people down that road or people who don't do what we do, meaning practice skills, prepping, bushcrafting, survival. It sends them down that road of see something, say something. And they start asking those questions of why do you want to stealth camp? Are you doing something you shouldn't be doing? Are you somewhere you shouldn't be? So I don't want to put people in a situation where they have to open that door and walk through it. Basically, practice common sense. Be careful where you go careful what you do. Thank you for your comments, view, support. Thanks for watching. Get out in the field, have some fun. I'm going to catch you next time.